let's talk about Formula 1. After the Indy 500, the regular European drivers regrouped for the Swiss Grand Prix. The Bremgarten street circuit was notoriously bumpy because of the uneven surface, but nevertheless the three Alfa Romeo drivers were expected as favourites. Ferrari brought some development to their 125s, with Villa Resi using an updated chassis with a new Derion rear suspensions, a twin overhead camshaft engine and a four-speed gearbox. The Gordini team will only participate in the support F2 race. Peter Whitehead was planning to enter with his own 125, but after the mechanical troubles he had experienced in Monaco, he was forced to withdraw this race as well. Franco Roll would also miss this race, as he was still healing from his broken arm in Monaco. Talbot Blago increased their drivers once again, bringing back Rosier and Eugen Martin. Rosier so loaned his private Talbot to American driver Harry Schell. This will be the last race for Martin, as he decided to end his racing career here. Scuderia Achille Varzi had both their drivers recovering from their previous crashes so they decided to select motorcycle racer Nello Pagani and local unknown driver Antonio Branca. Driver Felice Bonetto and his team Scuderia Milano also debuted in this race. A new manufacturer tried to qualify for this event as well, the Società Valdostana Automobili or SBA, which was a subsidiary of the Fiat Group. A couple of new cars were introduced at this venue, the Ferrari 166 F250 which, as the name implies, was a Formula 2 car. Raymond Sommer, the third works Ferrari entry in Switzerland, would participate in the 166F2 as he preferred to concentrate his efforts on the F2 support race that was to happen the same weekend. The other new car was the SVA Fiat 1500. So the entry list looked like this, with only 22 drivers entering the race. Thursday's practice session saw Louis Rosier testing his own Talbot before handing it over to Shell. Alfa Romeo hoped to use only one car for the whole day. Test and reserve driver Giambattista Guidotti brought the car out for an installation lap and then handed it over to Farina. Next was Fagioli, who unfortunately encountered engine trouble, which forced him back to the pits, so Fangio's outing required a second car. There were bad news for the A entry. Their car proved very unreliable and their driver, Rudy Fischer, was forced to withdraw. Friday saw the Ferrari boys discovering that their improvements to the 125 chassis had worked and now Villarese was only 0.7 seconds off Fagioli's time. Meanwhile, Sommer, who had won the Formula 2 race that day, couldn't keep up to the front-running cars because of his car's spec. In the end, Fangio took pole in front of his Alfa teammates Farina and Fagioli, with Villarese being the fastest Ferrari in P4, and Ascari in the non-upgraded car just 0.7 seconds behind his teammate in P5. Whitehead, Roll, Parnell and Fischer didn't attend qualifying. On race day, Fangio got off to an excellent start and kept his lead in front of his Alfa teammates. Ascari got an even better start and moved into third place. Caban 2 didn't even complete one lap, with his Talbo crashing off at IMAT corner. After the first laps, Ascari was keeping up with the Elfettas, but unfortunately, just four laps after the start, he pulled into the pits and retired with a broken oil pump. On lap 7, Farina gained the lead, and the next lap set the fastest time with a 2 minutes 41.6. The Ferrari hopes were all on Villarese, who managed to pass for Gioli, but unfortunately on lap 9, retired as well with a blown engine. On lap 19, the last Ferrari running, Sommer's F2 car, retired with a broken suspension. On the same lap, Eugene Martin, who was racing his last Grand Prix before retirement, went off an IMAT corner and was flown out from his car as it barrel rolled. He was quickly transported to the hospital. On lap 21, Fangio got back in the lead for two laps, then Fagioli got into P1, and the very next lap Farina went back in first place. On lap 25, Atanchelin retired with the gearbox issues. The Alphas were unstoppable, and by lap 33 they had lapped the entire field. On the same lap though, Fangio pulled into the pits, feeling some mechanical issues. 
The mechanics worked hard, but he soon found that he had to retire. Louis Rezier, meanwhile, was in a very comfortable third place. The Frenchman, having fueled heavy before the race, went the whole distance without stopping for refueling. Fagioli was catching up to Farina, but the checkered flap dropped and Farina won. Fagioli came second, just 0.4 seconds behind the Italian, and the non-stopping Rosier came home in third. After this race, Farina moved officially into the lead of the championship, six points ahead of his teammate Fagioli and nine points ahead of Fangio, who dropped to third place in the standings. That's the Swiss Grand Prix wrapped up. See you all next week for the Belgian Grand Prix. Cheers and have a good day everyone.